All right, today we're going to go over the ICOM 746 Pro. Now, you don't really know what the difference is between this one and the non-pro. Um, let's take a look at the back of it. So this radio has three connections on the back. It's very similar to the layout of the 756 Pro series. So, but unlike, I think, the 756 Pro Series, I think it's probably um, a bit newer. Um, looks fairly dusty in here. I need to clean this thing out with compressed air, probably. Um, there's a giant coil in there. So you have, I, I put this connector on here on purpose. This is the two meter one. Um, so you get the tuner, ground thing, key, accessory player one and two. Now they both do different things. And I forget which one it is, the one I usually use. Um, I've got a cable for the signal link. Um, you have the remote. And the AL, well, excuse me, you have the ALC right here, and send, and then you have remote, whatever that is. Um, I think that's you're going to be your CIV cable. There's the external speaker, and then it has this really weird little round din pin, like you'd find like on a Yesu or um, a D Star mobile radio that's the data port I've never used that but as I understand you can probably do some special stuff with that so it uh, two coax connectors unlike the 756 series it's kind of some curved roundedness here on the back for some reason it does have the icon stamped into it Unlike the 756, it has these riveted on rubber legs, which suck. And you see here, they do wear out. Um, there's some stains here. Previous owner that had this was a heavy smoker. It does use the same crappy plastic legs here. Um, the front of the radio is not black. It's kind of a pewter silvery color. And also, unlike the 756 Pro series, the display is LCD. This one sometimes takes a second to power on. We'll see. See, no, no backlight, then it comes on. Um, it's kind of got a certain tint to it. Um, I don't know exactly what it's using for a backlight. I think it's just a CFL bulb. It's a compact fluorescent. Um, and the radio itself is set up a lot like the 756 Pro, but it doesn't sound as good on transmit. It's not even close. And I really couldn't tell you the reason why. Let me see something here. So the main thing I use this radio for is two meters, because it doesn't really sound good on HF. Also, the early models have a very bad reputation for burning out the IC-151. And you'll just have to look that up. You have twin PBT over here. The memory channel and some memory stuff and I'm trying to think of how you I don't know what I have written in here it probably only goes to a hundred is what I'm gonna guess yep.
Okay. So that's my last channel there. And if I was going to program something into it, as I recall, let me see. I'm trying to remember how to use this thing. So we would need uh, the tone is enabled. You have two different ways to do things on this one. Split. And then also in this menu here. Duplex. Negative or positive offset will show up down there. I don't remember what this one was supposed to be. We'll just leave it as simplex. So you would then go in and you want to adjust your tone. You push that, it would turn on tone consol tone squelch, DTCS, or nothing, I guess. There's a regular tone. That's what you want. And then I believe in order to change the tone, you hold it down. And then you'd probably use the VFO. Yep. So it's fairly complicated as far as the radio goes for a lot of that stuff. And a lot of this stuff I don't think functions on two meters. RTTY. Also don't think it has RTTY decode, but maybe it does. So let's get out of that and we'll go over to like, let's see, we go to 10 meters, I think it's once antenna number two, I don't know why I've got it on that one, but it means the rest of the radio is probably on that one too. So one of the cool things that this radio does is you have this SWR thing and as you key up, you have to push this play button first. It does the same thing like the 7300 does. It'll show you where your match is at. Um, now the other thing that it also has is I don't know what these ones are, TCN. Oh, tone control. So you can adjust the receive tone. And then uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, RX base or treble. I, I really don't know what VSC is. And then TBW should be transmit bandwidth. You can do narrow, mid, or wide. Now, the radio doesn't really sound all that great compared to other radios of this time period. It sounds a little thin. Um, I don't really know why, but... I've tried different microphones with it. So then you have scan. Let's see what else you have. AGC. I don't know what this one is. Sc scan something. I think there is a little scanning band scope. Yeah, so... 
Hey, you have a, a noise reduction that really doesn't work all that great, probably. And then you have an auto notch built in antenna tuner, which is actually pretty decent. And you have your like keypad and all that. RIT. I don't really use the twin PBT. Now, I bought this radio with a broken one, and so I had to take it completely apart. And I had to install a new controller. It's like getting a dual encoder, basically. So that was fun. Now you have all your little buttons down here. The mic gain, the RF power, the CW pitch, the speed, preamp, noise blanker, box break-in, monitor, call, and lock speech. I don't think this one has the speech card because I think that's actually an option and you would hold that down and it would announce itself um, I th think I have one in my 756 Pro I think it's an option um, you get the key on the front phones transmit noise reduction notch um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of an interesting radio. Um, I worry about it, like, not lasting because they have the problem where you leave them on too long and that IC burns up. And I don't know if they're even available anymore. So I don't use it much. But um, it's definitely... It's okay on receive. Let me see if we can find anything. Might have trouble finding any signals today. And like a proper tuner. It follows you as you tune through the band. That's all the way up. There's really nothing, the bands are really, really bad. It's really bad. Anyway, um, one of the things I like about this is that basically um, I think these ICOMs can be set up to where um, the tuner or the radio will stop you from transmitting into a bad match. Whereas like the new Yasus, they don't really have that kind of tuner. 
Like as you tune through the band, this thing follows where you're going, it anticipates where you're at, and it tunes it up for receive also. Um, and if you have a bad match and you key up and start to talk, it, it can automatically tune it for you. You could turn that off, but like, but I've noticed with the AC radios is the tuner isn't really what we would call automatic. Um, it'll stay wherever you had it last, unless you've uh, had it memorized. Um, and what happens with the ASU is it'll just let you talk right into a 3 to 1 SWR and it won't do anything. This radio here, if it's set up properly, it will not let you do that. It will, if it can't tune it, it'll just keep tuning and tuning and tuning. And I think, as I remember correctly, um, it will like lock you out um, if you have it set properly. Um, anyway, I don't know what else to say about this radio. It's real touchy on uh, two meters as far as like getting 100 watts out. If you have any kind of SWR, it aggressively folds back power. Uh, other than that, like it's a cool radio. Uh, I don't know what they go for, but um, I probably, you know, use this thing a couple times a year. And I don't know if you don't do a lot of two meter sideband. I couldn't really see any point in owning one. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching.